Welcome back, everybody. I'm standing next to the biggest Florida Mayhem fan in the world right now because he really wanted this map five. He wanted to see more of the Hammond on every side. I, I do, it's a fun style. After a day that's been mostly 3-3 three, three and like, oh, this is a such intricate play, just give me lunacy, give me wackiness. And like, there's no better Looney Tune character than Hammond. It's ridiculous. It's a hamster inside a giant rolling mech. Like, let's have some fun. Let's have some fun. Drops mines. No fun allowed, my actually. My you know, it's, that's the thing. It's, it's fun for one my, person on the server, and it happens to be the hamster. Favorite noise in the game is his ultimate noise. Yes. It's like, squeak, squeak, squeak. Yes, <laughs> yeah, squeak, squeak, raining, squeak. raining death from above. Like, it's so discordant that I love it. No doubt, no doubt. It is. I mean, I thought that there wasn't anything more annoying than D.Va, but, uh, you know, I guess I guess we can, we can work on that. So we do have some subs coming through here. One for each team, in fact. So going into the control, it's going to be the return of Late Young for Bacon. Jack, Late okay. Young started it off for the Hunters, so is that a shock? Don't think so. No, Late Young's a good player. They have a lot of rotations, and there it is! Saya player coming in for Zephyr. Now, we are going to Busan as our tiebreaker map. Busan has been a stage in which Widowmakers have had opportunities to get play. And Saya, big play after big play last season. He was really the, the bright spot for that Florida Mayhem roster. He was, but it's a difference in, like, uh, meta, right? Yeah, not all, not all that much widow play these days. But we did. Well, to be it's fair, in this bit. game, it's a little bit misleading, yeah. you know, because we are seeing quite a bit of widow, but that's kind of rare. So you know, Saya, that was what he made his name. It's on. rare, but if you're gonna get to play it, it's probably gonna be against Chengdu. Yeah, yeah, because so they're no. they're probably not gonna run three three, so you have a little bit more opportunity to run some widow and also Busan in Mecha base. Mm -hmm. We've seen Happy from uh, Guangzhou run it pretty true, often, true. and seen Dallas try to run it a couple times. So there's definitely room for Widow on it on some of these stages. It's either Widow or McCree, and I'm happy if we see you know either one. I'm just happy Saya's playing. There we go, yeah. Saya. Are you surprised? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I mean, he's here, and we're going to get to see more action from him alongside the Florida Mayhem. And we're going to see, I mean, they battled their way out on Rialto. They were down a map, mm -hmm. managed to keep it together, get the work done. I mean, going into control is the last one, though. What is it? Well, I mean, it's been a while now because that was the first map of this series. Kind of hard to harken back all that way to remember what they did, you know, poorly. But, uh, well, I mean, I think they, they had a difficulty with the hamster. That means mm -hmm. it's very possible that Sai is on the McCree just so they can use the flashbang to slow down uh, Amon because on the first map he was running wild all over the place down to 100 HP, up to 1000 HP. So the more stuns and control you can put on to Amon, I think the better you should be expecting them to run Amon on hamster, mm -hmm. on Hammond, Wrecking Ball. He's, got, he's a man in many names, hero of many names, but uh, that might be the reason why. Um, I, I'm not entirely sure, but as we see here, Nepal, our first control map, was won by Chengdu. Then we went to Kings, and Tvik pulled out the Mei. Very good play there. Anubis was absolutely as one-sided as, as it gets. Uh, Mayhem didn't even get a point. So Rialto switched the other way, a very close map between the two. Doesn't matter now. We're going to Busan. Best of three on our control map here to decide the last set of the day. No overtime possible, something to keep in mind here. We will have a winner by the end of this map. And we'll see, are they going to be able to adjust on the Mayhem side or are the Nepal, well, not Nepal, but the Chengdu Hunters. The, Nepal, uh, the Hunters, are they going to be able to keep it together? And stick to their strategies that we have been highly entertained by so far in this match. More double sniper, please. That would make me so happy. Well, we're going to kick it off on the Mecha base. This is where you see a lot of Widowmaker play or teams at least attempt it before they switch on to something else. Be interesting to see what Saya opens with. They could just be trying to get him a little bit of play time in this as well. Keeping and, him happy, yeah. but I mean, we saw what, we saw how that went with Dallas Fuel earlier. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you, you cannot just be giving away wins just to try to keep people happy. Five, Definitely not. But Saya, I don't think that's the case here. It, it remains to be seen. And all right, let's go, Saya. Soldier 76, Saya coming out. A Come again. Probably, probably the least picked hero in all of Overwatch League right now. Unreal. Okay, then. Now I'm all about it. I love Soldier 76. Wish that he was still in the meta. Would play a lot more, but he is going to be getting through. Swan right over the top once again and just chasing Eamon away. Eamon's got to be careful. Doesn't want to give up the ghost this quickly. And nope, Tvik going to be there to hunt him down. So we've lost the Hammond immediately here for Hunters. BQB dying to late young though is a little bit rough. Dying as somber at all, usually a bad sign means maybe a decision or your friend's locator got deleted there. Brawl continues. 
trying to just find targets here and at least focus one, but Amon and Elsa come in. Three kills. They find the focus. They find the kills. Should be grabbing control of this point momentarily. All right. Not a whole lot that Tvik can do there. He does have his pulse grenade online, though, so ult is there for Tvik. As far as he's concerned, though, all the way in the back line right now. Saya player is running his way back in. We're going to see if the visor is going to do anything for him at all. There's not a whole lot of shields out there, so the only thing that can really do anything to prevent the visor from getting a lot of work done is going to be Elsa with D.Va. Maybe they can D-mech the D.Va first. Amon gets hacked. Still able to get out of it, though. Oh, there's the Coalescence, but it's not going to be fast enough. Timing is working out. The stick from Tavik Jimmu is dead. And just like that, the Mayhem going to strike right back in this fight. Well, the core is still sticking together, but there we go. Finally, Saya player able to connect. Bullets with face, and Keo is out of it. Ah, nice play there. Those of you who are new to the Overwatch League and have only seen Tavik on Brigida in May, was widely renowned as one of the best DPS players in early Overwatch competitive scene, and now he's getting back to his roots on the Tracer. Exactly. Glad to see him flex a little bit here. Interesting to see Saya as well on the loose with Soldier and sticking to it, not changing up or anything. Well, long range, taking advantage of the high ground, just whittling them down as they make their way through. I mean, with the, the less shields that Chengdu is running, I can see it working very well. A great sleep dart leads to Amon going down. Able to converge on him immediately. Florida should remain in control of this, but Chengdu never thinks they're out of a fight. No, they're always take the fight, take the battle, never back down. Well, on the high ground here, still just waiting together to move together. And they are going to go for the play here with the grab straight in. The big opportunity, Saya not going to be able to keep him alive. And that is going to be three quick kills picked up for the Hunters. Swan trying to turn that around with a kill on Late Young. Should be too little too late, however. And we are going to have the win here for the Hunters. Tavik out of it. Swan just trying to buy a little bit more time with the contest. And just like that, the Hunters will go for the flip. 58% for Mayhem. Just stalling out. Saya players got Tactical Visor. Now, it, because we don't see Soldier 76, I feel that I must explain it to you. Tactical Visor pretty much locks on. Anything on your screen, you're going to shoot onto. However, he's not seen a lot of play because there's usually so many shields up blocking that. A lot of healing coming in on the side, and you see exactly what the problem is. So much healing, so much shields. Soldier 76 used his ults and gets nothing for it. Oh, now we've got a Roadhog on the, you know, speak of guys that don't really get to show up to the party too often these days. Late Young is going to be there. Yeah, we saw Late Young play this on this stage against the charge earlier in last week. Yes. And that's exactly what happened to him. He became an ultimate charge battery for the opposing Tracer without getting a whole lot of work done. And you see, with all the healing and, and the, the Zarya to contest as well, getting a hook doesn't usually doesn't always translate into kill anymore. However, it's a good pick. There is no Zarya on the other side of Florida. I thought he just didn't bring the right snacks or something. You know, people just weren't digging, you know, his choice of beer, beverages. Uh, you know, fair enough. Two kills. Hunters doing quick work right now. Overtime quick, burning down, and there it is. The Hunters take the lead. 100% to 58%. Florida Mayhem not able to keep it together, and we will find out now. Match point for the Hunters. Florida Mayhem have to fight back. We're taking a break, and when we come back, we'll find out if they're capable. Find out is Late Young going to be capable enough on this Roadhog to find the kills, or is he going to be cut adrift, well, feeding alt? The juice has to be worth the squeeze. If Late Young is going to be this feeding alt battery with a giant health pool and then taking a breather and giving even more alt charge to some of the damage dealing heroes on the other side, he has to be getting those crucial hooks and kills. If you can hook a lot of heroes in this game now, but it's so hard to follow through on the damage. A huge anti heal nade actually goes on to the point, but they're going to walk right through it. Nice try, not quite quick enough. But if his aim is on with the hooks, there is still a chance here for Late Young to have an impact. As far as the rest of them are concerned, it is going to be 
It's also Wrecking meant to ball. disrupt Swan as well and to be a detriment to Bob. So if getting hooks and stuns, I get what they're going for, but if Tavik is just beating on him and dropping pulse bombs all over the place, and you have to wonder if a, a McCree or another hero which accomplishes a similar thing might not be more worth it. Once again, he's just beating. He's getting roasted there. Hagapun's going to be the one to find the kill. But he was hanging out for a while. EMP gets thrown in. That's BQB. Pays for it for his, with his life, but that might still translate. There's two kills on the back line here for the Hunters. Yeah, meanwhile, surely that's going to force him back. Chengdu had taken the point already, so already at 25%, which means they're going to stall out as much as humanly possible here. In the end, Florida should be able to get this back. It has been all yellow in the kill feed. Got to finish, though. Jinmu, late young, they're walking in one after another. The passive healing coming in from Jinmu's side is making him so difficult to whittle down. Eventually, Tavik is going to get... Oh, there it is! The man shows up in the nick of time, keeps his teammate alive just a little longer with the hook. Nice and now, Saya. Saya's just not finding anybody to shoot at. So while they're getting all these kills, it's Chengdu who's been playing the point. They're just going to remack here now. Amon, of course, on the Magical Mystery Tour and back. He's got mines up ready to go, but despite Florida having much better kills, the objective is not to kill the other team. The objective is to stay on the point. Doesn't use his mines. Interesting choice there from Amon. And there it is, finally, the cleanup coming through here for Florida Mayhem. But I mean, that was, that was what, nearly 30% worth of stall? More. Yeah. They were at 25% when the push started, yeah. really started for Mayhem. So okay. excellent work with the stall there from the Hunters. Well, the Hunters have some ultimates coming into this. Oh, that's the Saya we know and love. That's a beauty. That's a hard target to hit, too. Moira is like razor thin. If she turns sideways, she disappears. Also known as Kate Moss. But <laughs> going through. It is going to be the timely <laughs> reference. Hey, uh, they're going through. Hunters. Where is it going to come through, actually? Because they are getting contested now. Ma'am trading back and forth. Late Young out of it, but they lose their Moira. With the sound barrier there, though, it's going to make Florida Mayhem difficult targets to take down, but we've seen crazier things from the Hunters. Amen is just impossible to kill over here, still getting so the shields. Close. They're so close to getting the flip back over. Just a sliver more percentage. Oh, there it is! Ew. Control the point. You step off for a second, and now you're going to go ahead and keep getting that advantage, Hunters. Elsa's got to be careful, at risk of losing her mech. Ivatol gets hacked, but the heals are there for Keo, at least buying a little bit more time, and Saya going to get hunted down by Late Young and Elsa. This is sick work from the Hunters. That sneaky flip that worked out so perfectly. And now they're at 90% and counting. Mayhem are the ones with their backs to the wall. They're just skirmishers and brawlers. They are just all over the point. They get a couple critical kills here and there. Now Florida back against the wall. No EMP just yet. It's BQB looking oh. for it. He dies, gives up his life for it. Got spotted. Sick damage coming through. Now Keo's gonna get the pump, the AoE healing through as well. He is Coalesce here if you want for good yep. measure. There it is, Coalesce immediately. Get the lighthouse shining bright. So close, yes, the kill on Chris is monstrous. Amon just refuses to die. The healing is too good coming in here from Keo. And this is it, the Hunter surely will take the win. Three to two over the Florida Mayhem in the end. Hey, you practice all week against teams running 3-3. Three, three. You work on your 3-3, three, three. you got it really down, and then Chengdu says, aha, aha, hold my hamster, let's go. Oh, how about that, exactly. You're gonna have a tough time. Oh, brilliant work from the Hunters, a well-deserved win in the end. Florida has gotta leave a bitter taste. But again, motivation to keep on going and to show just how versatile you are as a roster. Makes it so difficult to counter. The Hunters really got the job done well today. Still some bright spots for Florida as they continue to figure it out. A lot of talent on that roster. And, you know, it's the Overwatch League in 2019. No one knows who's good. No yes. one knows who's bad. All I know is that I am entertained. And that's all I really care about. All these teams so close together, bunched up. Over the next couple of weeks, we're going to try to see some separation. But in this meta and in this anti-meta, it's just been it's just been nuts. But we do have an interview on the floor. Let's go down to Emily, who's standing by with Bacon Jack. Hey, everyone. I'm so excited to be here with Bacon Jack. It's such a fun name to say. Congrats on your win. Our first question is, um, you have actually took a hiatus from Overwatch for a bit, but now you're back on the Overwatch League uh, stage. So how does it feel to be back? So we know you 
，呃，我觉得非常开心，因为《守望先锋》对我来说就是算是我人生的一部分啦。我从《守望先锋》也学到了很多东西，所以我来这里非常开心。He's so excited to be back because Overwatch is a really huge part of him, and he learned a lot from this game. So, yeah, he's excited to be back. Um, the second question is: Your next match will be against the Shanghai Dragons, who just came off an epic first win last night. So, how does that feel, and what did you guys do to prepare? 那么你们下一场比赛是面对上海龙，那么我们都知道他们昨晚刚刚获得首胜，所以你们面对下一场比赛都做了什么样的准备？嗯，我们对每一场比赛都会有准备啦。那内容是什么就不方便跟大家说了，但我们会全力以赴了。Okay, um, let me ask that in a different way, because he said, you know, we uh, prepare differently for each game, but that's something we can't disclose to you. But I guess what, I'm, uh, what I would like to know is that, you know, a lot of Chinese gamers actually said that Shanghai Dragons is one of the strongest Chinese teams. What do you think about that? Because many players have said that Shanghai Dragons is one of the strongest Chinese teams in the world. Do you We'll find out. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I, I asked them, you know, a lot of gamers uh, said the Shanghai Dragons might be one of the strongest teams. And Bacon Jack says, we'll find out. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, Bacon Jack. Congrats again. And casters, back to you guys. Thank you very much, Emily. And I'm glad to hear Bacon Jack give us his thoughts. An exciting day of Overwatch comes to a close four big matches and we got four more coming up tomorrow but before we go we will have watch points and we will have a special surprise for you on the desk as well a player will be joining so be sure to stick around half an hour of overwatch talk and jokes and banter because brand is here too don't go anywhere we'll be back with that by T-Mobile. High ground or low ground, T-Mobile has you covered. And by State Farm. Whatever life brings your way, State Farm is here to help life go right.